Good morning, church. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, it's a pleasure to be here this morning, Bethlehem. I want to start off with uh, our welcome everybody who is visiting us by live stream. We were so glad that you could participate in the service this morning. We want to extend our heartfelt love to you. We miss you sitting in the sanctuary, but we know that you are with us in spirit. Amen. Yeah, Jesus. Yes. Your word also tells us that if you abide in us and we abide in you, 
We can ask anything in your name. Yes. We should have touched this government, Heavenly Father. Touch the leaders. Remind them of the job that they are doing and who they are representing. We ask you for peace in this land. Thank you. There has been so much confusion, so much hurt, so much pain. But Father, you tell us that we have to pray for our enemies. So we ask you to bless them right now in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. Yes. And deliver them, Lord, to be the people of God that you would have them to be. And as we come before you, Lord, we don't take it for granted that we are being here today. Because somebody died there last night, they didn't wake up this that's morning. Right, that's right, that's right, that's right. They didn't wake up, Lord, this morning. But we are so fortunate yes. to be standing right here. We don't take it lightly. Right. It could have been the other way, Lord. Yeah. So we ask you, Lord, to meet every need. You know every need. You sit high and you look low. You know every need, spoken and unspoken. So we call on you, Lord, to be that whatever they need you to be. And have this church, Bethlehem Baptist yes. Church, yes. be that church in the heart of the city with the people in our hearts. That we're that band-aid that they can come crying, what must I do to be saved? And we will stretch out holy hands and embrace them and tell them about a Savior who can save anybody. So right now we close this prayer in the precious and powerful name that's above every name, yeah. the name of Jesus. Amen. And all the people of God say amen. Yeah. Amen. amen.
allowed us this opportunity to come together to worship on this day as uh, we worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm so glad that God doesn't have a calendar and follow the schedule like you and I follow it, but he works in his own time and in his own way. We express our gratitude to our music ministry, Dr. Witherspoon, to our worship leader. Thank you so much. I gotta ask y'all y'all's name because I can't tell you. It's Justine, right? All right, thank you so much, Justine, to Anderson Hayes for the uh, taping of it, to David, who uh, is recording this, and uh, Dr. Witherspoon, and to all who have a hand in making this program or this broadcast possible. We are grateful for your presence and for your ministry. Now, I need to make an announcement. I need to make an announcement. I need to ask you all to pray for us. I've, I've been talking to our leadership about this, but uh, I want to publicly say this to, to everybody now, that uh, we as a church family have been offered a gift. And it is the gift of a worship facility from the Chamberlain Baptist Church. And many of you perhaps have already gotten, I understand it's already out there, y'all talking about it. But uh, the Chamberlain Baptist Church, which is a predominantly white congregation, uh, has made a decision to disband, but they have a multi-million dollar facility that they've been praying about. Uh, it's a uh, sanctuary, educational complex that triples what we have now. Uh, it is a family life center, gymnasium. Uh, as I stated before, it's a multi-million dollar facility and they want to donate it to Bethlehem Baptist Church. And so I'm asking that we might go into a season of prayer, that we might make the proper response in terms of how we shall deal with this request. Uh, it is perhaps one of the uh, great decisions in my 30 plus years of ministry here at Bethlehem Baptist Church. Uh, it is perhaps one of the greatest opportunities for us. And uh, so some decisions must be made. No, this, no decisions have been made at this particular point because we realize that it is a decision that shall be made by the congregation as, a, as to whether or not we will receive it or what, how we will respond to it. So I'm simply asking that we might go through a season of prayer in terms of how we shall respond to the opportunity presented to us by the Chamberlain Baptist Church. Many of you already have been driving by. It is a phenomenal facility. I mean, yeah. we, uh, it, it is huge. It is indeed. It is. It's major. And for us to try to, we couldn't duplicate that here at this particular corner right here. We couldn't duplicate that. And so it is my request as your pastor that you might be in prayer as to how we will respond to this gracious offer from the Chamberlain Baptist Church family. We've gotten a letter from them and it's been brought to our board and everything. And everybody basically agrees that we realize this is a congregational decision. And at some date in the future, after we've had opportunity to discuss this, many of you have already been by the facility, you know where it is. Some of us have even toured it. We walked around with our mouths wide open to realize how blessed we are to be, just be in a position where we are given that opportunity to receive it. And so it is a congregation that said, we are a Baptist church. And as a Baptist congregation, you know how we do business. You know, it's, it's us. We've got to make a decision. So we're going to give you some time. We're going to arrange and announce it. A time in the future in which uh, there will be an open house where our members can be exposed to exactly what it is. Uh, people are asking and saying, uh, well, uh, you know, what about what about the cost of operating that facility? Well, it's, it's a more modern facility than what we have now. And uh, as we looked at the finances, what, what their budget is and what our budget is, is less because it's a more modern facility. It's a more up-to-date facility. We know that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And I think that we had uh, even had some time in the past in which we had some estimates in terms of what we wanted to do in this sanctuary, to upgrade this sanctuary. And uh, uh, there was something in the neighborhood of a million dollars just to upgrade this sanctuary. And so the question is, to, you know, what's, what's going to be the best investment that we can make in terms of our future. So I just simply ask that you might be in prayer, Bethlehem Church. 
uh, as we seek to do that which will bring glory and honor to God and will, will result in the advancement of his kingdom through this particular church family we know as the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Let the church say amen. I can't hear you. But amen. I, uh, I trust that you <laughs> uh, will heed our encouragement. There is a word from the Lord today, and it's found from the New Testament book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. For our consideration this morning, uh, I want to ask you to focus with me on verses 24 and verses 25. That's Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. Hear now the reading of God's word. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. As we see the day approaching. Father God, again, we bless you and thank you for the gift of your word. Work through me, speak through me, O oh gracious God, that we may seek to hear a word from you and to offer encouragement to this your church family. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. But whenever it snows, I'm reminded of a marvelous lesson that God provides us uh, through nature, that event called snow. You know, I remember when we were children and there in that neighborhood I grew up in called Seatac, whenever it would snow, we would run outside and we would try to catch a snowflake on our fingers. But I don't know if you've ever had the experience, but it didn't last long because the body heat would cause that snowflake to melt no sooner than it basically touched our finger. So fragile is a snowflake. One would wonder what could ever happen uh, to a snowflake. I mean, be being so fragile, what, what damage could it do? But the lesson we learned from a snowflake is a lesson of what happens when they stick together. When snowflakes stick together, they can shut down a city, close schools. I mean, completely alter our daily agenda, all because just some fragile snowflake decide to stick together. Well, I, whenever it snows, I reminded maybe that maybe that's a lesson that God wants to remind his church. That maybe individually, you and I by ourselves, we can't do very much. But look at what can happen when we stick together. This church is over, what, 130 years old? Somebody help me with my history? But look at what's happened down through the years because some folks stood together. Uh, started down on Sweet Home Alley, then moved up to Buckhanna Street, and now where we are today. And our journey is not complete. God has often used us. If there's anything we could say about us as a church family, that this is not a stagnant congregation. This is a dynamic congregation. Our church has constantly been on the move. And from generation to generation, God has given each generation a new challenge, even as we find ourselves challenged today. And so my prayer, my, my word, my encouragement to you, my, my, my plea for you, Bethlehem, is that we might enter into a season of prayer that we might be sensitive to what God would have us to do and to be as we seek to become a greater church for his glory and for his honor. Would you covenant with me to do that? That in this particular week coming up, that, that well, well, here we are, what, at the end of January, just about, got a couple more days, but that the month of February will be a season of prayer I know we've not been able to come together for prayer meeting because of clothing and all the, some of y'all are scared to death. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm looking at y'all right now. I, kinda, I don't even know who's out there because y'all got a mask on. <laughs> but be in prayer as we seek God's leadership for this next phase of our church's life. Amen? amen. And amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Eternal God, again, we thank you for the opportunity for to come together in this time of worship. We thank you that you've given us the technology that although we are in something that they call a pandemic, we can use this technology to, technology to reach beyond 
uh, our current situation into the homes of, of families. And Lord, I, I thank you for the positive testimonies that I've been hearing about people who are not even members of our congregation who are tuning in to the broadcast. And so, Father God, I pray that you might allow this to be an extended opportunity for ministry for your glory and for your We seek your guidance, oh gracious God, as we have come to a point where we've been provided a marvelous opportunity for growth and development and, 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 and a, a precious gift, oh gracious God. And we pray, oh gracious God, that indeed you might give us wisdom and the resources we need in order to move forward for your glory and for your honor and for extended ministry. In Jesus' name we do pray. And the people of God together say amen. amen. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the sweet communion of his blessed Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us. Now, henceforth, and forevermore. Everybody say Everybody say Everybody say